I'm shocked, surprised, but flattered to be called a music educator by the Grammys. But I really don't consider myself a teacher. I'm a musician who cares about music and how to get teenagers to love music. I look at the teachers around me and I admire how they motivate the average student who has to be in their class and they never get to hear the applause from an audience or take a bow. I come from a long line of musicians. My grandfather, father, several uncles, my brother, and my two sons are musicians. We play together on a regular basis. A lifetime of being surrounded by music has led me to my ultimate goal in the classroom, to get these students to play great music by the great composers for a live audience and appreciate the music itself. Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Dvorak, Shostakovich, Bernstein, Copland, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and some composers I've been fortunate enough to know personally. As a professional musician, I know that scales and exercises are the basic ingredients towards performance. Master the scales before you attempt to play the music of the masters is my mantra. My students know the routine. Every class session begins with long tones, articulation, bowing, vibrato, shifting exercises, scales and arpeggios. We sing intervals, we sight read rhythms, we practice the conducting patterns. Performing this great music for a live audience is quite exciting, but it's the moments in class when I see the students immersed in playing that gets me most emotional. When a phrase sounds particularly good, I stop them and say, shh, listen. Stravinsky, he's in the room. He's really here. I've had many proud moments as a teacher. I brought 579 of my students to perform at Carnegie Hall in New York City. We brought guests like radio personality Bob Sherman to narrate Peter and the Wolf with us, or Buffalo Philharmonic's conductor Joanne Folletta to conduct a rehearsal. We've hosted students and teachers from other countries like Singapore and Israel. But the proudest moment is when I have my students get up and conduct the class, especially when it's a student who never dreamed of conducting a full symphonic band and gains the admiration of his fellow students for his leadership skills. My biggest challenge is when I am blessed with a student who's already an artist. How do I keep that kid motivated so he comes to class to bring the level of musicianship up for the other students? It's a delicate balance between showcasing these young artists in the school setting while helping the less experienced students grow and reach their potential as musicians. Now making a mark in the concert world are jazz tennis saxophonist Sam Dillon, violinist Yumi Saguchi, jazz vocalist Lisa Gary, Sean, Lauren, and David Carpenter, the founders of the Salome Chamber Orchestra. I try to get to see these accomplished artists when they appear in New York's concert halls, while I'm proud to be introduced by them as, this is my high school music teacher. I'm more overjoyed to see that after the concert, other former students of mine came because they remember deciding to keep playing their instrument when they got to sit in class to play with David Carpenter every day or Sam Dillon. You can practice 
said, thirds and a bunch of different um, options, you know. <laughs> The best part is when a lasting relationship with these students leads to return visits to their roots, motivating a new generation of young musicians.